All right, let's graph some more and see what we're up to. So here is a rational function. Let's uh, find some nice points first and then see if we can sketch a nice picture of it. So first thing I try to do is to factor if I can. Just because a factored rational function is always more friendly than a non-factored. This negative sign tells me opposite signs here. <clears throat> 3 and 1. Perfect. All right, uh, asymptotes. How about um, vertical asymptotes? That's where the denominator equals 0. That's where x equals 0. That's pretty easy. Horizontal asymptote, well, the degree of the polynomial in the numerator is 2. It's a quadratic. In the denominator, it's linear. It's 1. The power in the top is greater than the power on the bottom. The top dominates, no asymptote. While I'm here, let's find this the zeros, where it crosses the x-axis. Well, that's where the numerator is 0, so either x equals negative 3 or x equals 1. All right, so we can make a table of points, which I already did. I just plugged into here. So for example, if you take negative 1 and plug it in here, you can evaluate. You can actually do it here or here. Like if you put negative 1 in here, you see negative 2 here. And then you put in a negative 1 here, and you see, actually, this is going to be negative 1 plus 3 is going to be 2. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 divided by negative 1 gives you 4. You see? See, you just fill it in. All right, let's plot away. Plot away, plot away, plot away. The first thing I always do is draw in the asymptote, since that's going to sort of divide the world up into various pieces. There's only a vertical asymptote. That's at the, at the, um, on the y-axis. x equals 0. So we cut the world up into two pieces. And let's plot some points. So we have the zeros at negative 3 and at 1. And some other points? Sure, you want other points? I got other points. At negative 6, 4, 5, 6, I'm at a negative 3 and a half. 1, 2, 3 and a half. Negative 3, 1, 2, 3, I am, oh, at 0. Good, OK, that's that. At negative 2, I'm at 1 and a half, 1 and a half. At negative 1, I'm at 4, whoa, way up there. And let's take a look at these other points. At 1, I'm at 0. Good. At 2, I'm at 2 and a half. 1, 2 and a half. At 3, I'm at 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Good enough for me. I know there is no horizontal asymptote, so this thing is going to be going out into space and then coming down and rubbing up against but never touching this asymptote. And similarly, but in an opposite direction, here. Sort of a wide, wide mouth graph with um, one uh, vertical asymptote, but no horizontal asymptote. Very pretty picture. Let's take a look at another one, because these are kind of like raisins. You can't just do one. Here's one. Now, actually, we can use a graphing calculator to graph these functions, just like you can graph any function. Rational functions, just a special case of functions. So just like you've been seeing how to graph other functions, you can actually use the graphing calculator to sketch a graph of a rational function. Let's uh, analyze this a little bit and then take a look and see what the graphing calculator produces when you actually graph it on the graphing calculator. So without the graphing calculator, we can do a lot. For example, we can find the horizontal asymptotes. That's where the denominator. I'm sorry, uh, the vertical asymptotes. Let's do the vertical asymptotes first. That's where the denominator equals 0. Well, that's when x squared equals 0, and so I see x equals 0. Horizontal asymptote. Well, notice that the, the numerator is a linear polynomial. The denominator is now a quadratic. Degree is higher downstairs than upstairs. That means the, dom the dominating term is going to be downstairs. If you want to fantasize for a second, think about the terms that really matter as x gets big. The plus 3 doesn't matter. It's really just x. x over x squared simplifies to 1 over x. And 1 over x, as x goes, get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, what happens to 1 over x? It gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It hits to 0. So in fact, we are going to have a horizontal asymptote at y 
equals zero. Remember this in general, if the degree of the denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator, you always have an asymptote, a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Uh, there's also uh, zeros. The zeros are when the numerator equals zero, and that's when x equals negative three. Okay, well armed with that, we can actually now see if the graphing calculator is going to confirm. Let's take a look at it. So if we graph it on a graphing calculator, we just type in this function, set the window, and we're good to go. Look what you get. Now look at that. Now do you see the asymptote? Do you see the horizontal asymptote? Look where it is. Exactly where we predicted. The vertical asymptote. Perfect. And notice that it crosses the x-axis at just one point. And do you see where that point is? Bingo. Negative three. We're good to go. Anyway, you can see that the graphing calculator is a powerful way of looking at graphs or sometimes even just checking your answer. You graph it yourself and you want to say, hey, let me just see if my graphing calculator is as smart as I am. The answer is you're smarter, but it's sort of fun to watch the graphing calculator catch up. Let's try a one last example together. And we'll have a little bit of fun. Let's have some fun, you know? Let's get this party started. All right. Well, here is the rational function I want us to consider. Let's, um, let's factor. First thing I always do is factor. So if I factor this, I can do a couple things here. I can notice I can pull out a factor of 3. When I do that, I have 3 times x squared minus 4. That's the difference of two perfect squares. So I have x plus 2 times x minus 2 divided by, and that's the difference of two perfect squares, x plus 3, x minus 3. There you have it. Now it's all factored. Great. How about some asymptotes? OK, we can order some of those up. How about the vertical asymptotes? That's where the denominator equals 0. There are two places where the denominator is 0. x equals negative 3 and x equals 3. So this, is, this, this actually is going to have two vertical asymptotes. What about horizontal asymptotes? We'll take a look. Notice that here we push, because this is a quadratic divided by a quadratic. So the exponents are the same. The degree is the same. So if you think about it sort of philosophically, you want to find out where you're leveling off. The lower order terms don't matter. Notice that now, since we have a tie, these guys cancel. We go into overtime. We're just left with 3 over 1. You take the coefficient here divided by the coefficient here. There's an invisible 1. 3 over 1 gives us 3. So this is going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. Are there zeros? Sure, let's plunk down the zeros. That's where the numerator equals 0. Well, 3 never equals 0, but that equals 0 at x equals negative 2. That equals 0 at x equals 2. Now, believe it or not, just armed with that, we can probably produce a really, really nice picture of this function. Let's take a look at it together. Very first step, in my mind, put in the different asymptotes. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. Mark that in with a dotted line. And also one at 3. Equally dotted. And we've got a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3. So we have to go up 3. And what you notice here is that this cuts the world up into six different regions. Do you see them? One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to be sort of living somehow within these regions. All right, now where do we go from here? Well, let's now insert these points that we know. We have the zeros, so we see that x equals negative 2 is one of the zeros. So we cross the x-axis at negative 2. We also cross the axis at 2. And so, uh, and let's see, let's plug in x equals 0, which is an easy point. So here's some easy points. f of 0. If we let x be 0, we just are left with negative 12 over negative 9, which is 12 ninths, which if we simplify is 4 thirds, which is 1 and a third, so it's a little bit over 1. And so what I see here is that we get a, a picture where we're going to be asymptotic here. 
we're going to sort of come up and then come down. So it's going to sort of look like a, an upside down U. And then what happens in the other regions? Well, again, you could pick some points. I mean, we could, example, we could pick a point, let's say, uh, 4. So if we pick 4, let's plug in 4. What do we get? Well, we can plug into the original thing, or we can use this thing right here. If we use this thing right here, if we plug in 4, 4 plus 2 is going to be uh, 6. And then I've got 4 minus 2, which is going to be 2. So 6 times 2 is 12. And so I've got 12 times 3, which is 36, divided by, and then if I put a 4 in here, 4 minus 3 is 1, and 1 times, and I've got a 4, and this is a 7, so I've got um, 36 over 7. What is that roughly? It's like 35 over 7, so it's a little bit bigger than, than 5. It's actually 1 seventh bigger than 5, so here's 4, here's 5, it's a little bit bigger, so I get a point right here. Similarly, you can actually see for yourself that if I plug in negative 4, since I plug in negative 4 into each of these, I'm going to square them. It's going to be the same thing as plugging in 4. So in fact, I'm going to get the exact same height there. And that's enough to tell me, believe it or not, since I know these are asymptotes, I've got to be hugging up to here, coming down and hugging out to here. I just need that one anchor point to know sort of which region I'm in. Once I knew that and I see the symmetry, because I'm squaring everything, I'm going to get the symmetric sort of picture reflection over here. So what a beautiful looking graph, which really came out of just some basic sort of analysis of the situation, plotting a few points, and we're good to go.